We'll do it real quick. Hello. It's Tuesday, October 11th, 2016. 2 p.m. Uh, here in the uh, Pacific Northwest of North America. Uh, three uh, subjects to go over here. Uh, all referencing uh, post-processing of our uh, data sets. I keep the processing running after the report's issued just to make sure that I haven't missed anything, which I usually do, um, vital to, that I should have stuck in the report. And, I, and then I also have to keep the processing going for the next run and clean out the database and all this kind of stuff. But the, um, uh, so this post-processing though, there's a lot of immediacy data. The immediacy data here is um, uh, discussing, uh, it's actually calling I'm not calling out. It's it's describing a situation in which uh, Hillary's uh, well, well, the Hil Hillary Clinton campaign loses its head these last few weeks. Uh, it's describing a situation in which uh, Hillary's health becomes a paramount issue from here onward. Uh, the issue of Hillary's health is not going to stop uh, just because she uh, wins or loses the election. It won't matter. There's still going to be all these issues about that. Going to that, it's very unusual. Uh, to note that if uh, you go and look at the um, campaign schedule, they don't have her scheduled to do much the rest of this month uh, prior to the election. You'd think major election, major country, a lot of money involved. You'd be out there hustling until the last minute, you know, but um, apparently not. So uh, maybe that'll change. Maybe I just saw a strange version of it or something, but uh, it only had two um, commitments for her over the rest of this month uh, prior to the election. So it's going to be quite odd there. A uh, lot more about the, um, the oddity, the confusion levels on the election in the uh, October report. Uh, the other aspect of things that we need to go over relative to um, uh, Hillary being missing is the more recent post-processing uh, immediacy data that said that the campaign was going to have to deal with uh, Hillary's health as an issue and would not do well doing that this week. The reason that that's kind of um, um, not critical, but um, uh, a very interesting coincidence, uh, a temporal connection that had been, had been seen and talked about before, uh, is that the uh, yeah, campaign sort of um, floundering, if you will, having issues that reach to the level of the mainstream press having to cover for it at the same time that we see Bitcoin going off is at the core of our uh, Bitcoin uh, forecast from some time back. And so you'll find one of these little talks uh, further on down the page here on my channel uh, that talks about this particular pattern that Bitcoin was going to have. And that Bitcoin pattern because of a lot of it in there, it talks about how the temporal markers had jumped forward six weeks and all this other stuff, which I won't go back into. But um, there was a juxtaposition there between certain things going on in the campaign, which were also occurring um, uh, in uh, uh, late May and early June, and uh, uh, Bitcoin and Bitcoin's rise. And we've got Bitcoin rising again, and it appears that uh, we're at, at a very interesting weekend. So in our uh, report, you can read more about Bitcoin and more about the campaign. Uh, and you can also go back and look at this other video uh, where I discuss the pattern that's going to come on out. And I'll draw it here. I've got myself a new tool, a lightweight uh, chalkboard that hopefully I can use to uh, illustrate things here a little bit better. Uh, taking advantage of the day, it's just phenomenal. You know, we, we get them this, this way occasionally where you're just there and all of a sudden you're just blessed with one of these magnificent days that remind you of why you live here, why you put up with all of the rest of the, <laughs> the problems of living here. Anyway, uh, there was a juxtaposition between uh, Bitcoin and a rise that was going to take, the particular kind of rise it was going to take that I describe as crocodile teeth, which is probably some kind of very erratic, up and down kind of trading thing that produces these on a chart. And hopefully this will be visible. And so there's our crocodile teeth. And as you can, there's our crocodile teeth. And as you can see, uh, the um, overall pattern is up. We had, in our data sets, we had that going on and being launched from a period of time in which we had, uh, let's just call it um, uh, political, um, uh, 
confusion, I guess, because everybody's confused about uh, Hillary's health. Um, so we had this uh, had this in the data sets uh, back at the end of May, and it was talking. Uh, the data sets were quite. Uh, Interesting and in talking about the Bitcoin rise because the crocodile teeth are going to take it up over a thousand uh, US uh, Over a thousand US dollars and it'll fall down uh, fall right back. Uh, so just be advised It'll go over a thousand again. Then it'll fall back again uh, It it does this over a thousand uh, up and down uh, business in a very short period of time say two three four days maybe maybe two or three four hours not very long and uh, it goes up and down up and down uh, over a thousand uh, and then it just kind of like mm, deflates down to about uh, 888. It'll hover around 888, um, uh, the way silver had been hovering around 1888. For whatever reason, this is the year we're going to get a lot of eights in place. And so um, uh, that's the way the Bitcoin uh, process was going to go off in the temporal marker that we had also at that time in June when Bitcoin shot up over... Uh, a thousand and then fell way back down. Uh, what was also was this political campaign stuff at the same time. Now that's a bit more intense. Now we have um, uh, some of the other temporal markers we were looking for also at the same time. And so it may be that this, this uh, weekend will be our uh, Bitcoin breakout weekend. Now if that's the case, uh, we'll see Bitcoin uh, go up over 648 and then that's then it's done with it won't it won't be messing with the 640s the 650s anymore then it'll go out 688 and that, when it goes over 688 and keeps on going it's going to change its pattern so prior to the the um, uh, 688 the charts will look one way uh, and then we have a description for them looking slightly different so I'll just put down here current price as CP and then we have this sort of lumpy little thing of crocodile teeth up to the point that we get to 688 US. And from there on, it becomes too steep to walk. Okay, so from 688 up to 1000, the advance is at a, a slope that a human would find very, very difficult to, to walk up. You'd have to climb that. And so, so the, the slope it changes from this pattern up to this very steep pattern as it goes up into uh, 1,000. And then, as I say, it bounces uh, up and down like that kind of thing, and then down to 888, which wherever wherever 888 would be here, uh, and then it comes back up again after some period of time has has elapsed. Uh, in the in the process of things. However, Bitcoin's got some rather spectacular stuff to do later on this year relative to the Chinese Yuan, which brings us back to our developing reality. So uh, the description earlier, um, or description in the video that you'll also find on this channel about Bitcoin's progress is now that all of that progress, its angles, uh, all of the stuff described is now becoming active. The reason it's becoming active is we have a, our political uh, setup, if you will. We also have the Chinese setup participating and that, that occurred here as they devalued the yuan uh, yet again, causing the Chinese uh, to once again seek out a, a safe haven for their wealth and they're again concentrating on Bitcoin. And so if this is that particular weekend, we'll see a uh, rise up in uh, Bitcoin uh, past 648 uh, by a before Friday, and then all kinds of activity in Bitcoin price over that particular weekend. And there should also be commensurate with that uh, such moves as can occur in uh, the paper equities markets and so on while those markets are shut off, shut down. I mean, it'll be a weekend, so they won't be operating. But the data sets have described a situation in which a lot of people uh, were excited because of the Bitcoin going up. And then there was a bunch of other people that were, were extremely excited because they were very paranoid about what was happening to their particular investments. And uh, so they were just itching for the market to open up on Monday and uh, so they could start doing things or open up Sunday night or whenever it was that would affect them. And uh, so the data sets were describing a huge mass of people in that camp that, <laughs> that are going to be very agitated and very concerned about their paper debt uh, equity kind of investments. And then there's going to be a bunch of other people that are very excited about the, the uh, takeoff of Bitcoin. Now, 
in, a, in, a, in addition to that, there's an adjacent group to those that are in the Bitcoin that over that weekend will be saying, hot damn, here it comes for silver and gold because this is the setup that uh, is perfect for silver and gold. And with the uh, equity anxiety, whatever else is going on that's causing all of that stuff, and then the Bitcoin rise. And the Bitcoin rise is a long run this time. So it's going to go um, uh, pretty much uh, active or, or uh, not continuously, but uh, really uh, relative to what's happened in the first half of the year, in, the, in these last couple of months of the, of the year, we'll see a lot more Bitcoin activity than before. A lot of it in China. Uh, so uh, Chinese dominance of Bitcoin is going to continue, and this is pretty much good for the planet, uh, the way these things go. Uh, so that was our uh, juxtaposition of the uh, Hillary campaign and the Bitcoin stuff. Maybe it's setting us up for that forecast weekend uh, in which all this uh, chaos sort of breaks out. Now, in addition to that, we have a appearing uh, a lot of the language that was forecast around um, uh, space aliens and this kind of thing. Uh, what we call space goat farts. It's uh, the area where we put all of, where I put all of the um, officially denied, um, all the uh, really unknown, and all the very speculative stuff. So, uh, you know, if it's too, too weird <laughs> for the other parts of the uh, model space, it ends up in space goat farts. Now, with, within that space goat farts uh, entity, we've had some really interesting forecasts that have come out uh, that have been quite accurate. And it's also influenced a number of others. Uh, so, in other words, we would get a forecast about uh, Oh, for instance, the uh, Costa Concordia, the, the ship that went down. And uh, there were links to the Space Goat Farts component that basically said, we don't know why it's going to happen, but we know it will happen. And it makes no sense that it's going to happen at this stage, ahead of it happening, but nonetheless, it will. And so the, uh, that particular entity, the Space Goat Farts entity, does come up with some very interesting uh, forecast elements that do, uh, do manifest. And we've had one of those recently about um, uh, this thing that, that I was calling the uh, space alien cruise ship flyover. Now, in that, it's described as a, a space alien uh, cruise ship, basically a pleasure cruise, as near as I can tell. And they uh, come and they cruise around the planet and uh, give us the once over. And, but they do it in such a way that, that lots of people, I mean, like the data sets are talking a billion plus people see this. Uh, and so it's my thinking, along with another, oh, I don't know, <laughs> 20,000 hits in the database uh, that kind of point us towards Eurasia as the continent in which this thing will come down. That's really the only way that, that we could get over a billion people to see this, is if the thing, you know, maybe came in over uh, Spain and left out over China after crossing over all that huge land mass relatively slowly so that everybody gets a look, look see, or come in the other way, you know, either way. Um, in any event, so that was just a, a supposition based on the number of um, references to places in Eurasia. But of course, there's always uh, the problem with this is that in North America, lots of our place names are just <laughs> renaming <laughs> the places that the, the, the grandparents came from uh, in Eurasia, <laughs> or you know, in, in uh, England or um, uh, Europe. You know, so so we the place names are not definitively clear all, in any sense in ever ever. Uh, I have to get a really preponderance of stuff to be able to pick out a, a site and with any kind of confidence just because geographic references show up all over the place and they're, they can be very vague. It's not like my data sets operate in a um, uh, lat long kind of a situation. Uh, uh, it's all done linguistically. So uh, we're getting all this stuff about this cruise ship uh, flyby, which I don't think has occurred, but some of the language is starting to show up. The a small amount of it, maybe six or eight percent, is appearing, and we are uh, also uh, commensurate with that, uh, seeing a rise in the number of uh, UFO uh, uh, captures on video. This latter is to be expected. Okay, there's just more damn cameras out there, and so I could be making one of these uh, uh, goofy little talks, and zing, you know, just like happened to Max Kaiser, right behind you, there goes a UFO. 
So Max Kaiser was involved in a, in a um, close encounter of the fifth kind or sixth kind or whatever. No probes involved, <laughs> just a flyby. Uh, and he didn't even know it. He was not aware of it because it was happening basically on the camera and too fast for, uh, for his eyes. And he wasn't even looking in the right direction, of course. So uh, that's, that's what's going on. Is there's just so many video cameras out there that, uh, and phones and things with ca uh, cameras in them, including drones. We're starting to see a huge uptick now in uh, UFO photos captured by drones that have to be out cruising around taking uh, pictures of houses for real estate or, you know, following Junior on his um, dirt bike expedition or whatever. So, uh, just, it's interesting. And now we have the data sets coming out that are also um, uh, at the very last of the uh, processing here in the October report. We're, we're essentially indicating that we're going to see a spike in the activity within this particular set that is relative to our space alien cruise ship flyby. Um, I have no way of knowing how that's going to occur. In the post-processing, it was a lot of immediacy data. It was a lot of uh, emotion-altering uh, data sets that changed the emotional sums and increased those that are for intensity and duration, and also for immediacy. doesn't mean it's going to appear because our immediacy threshold, I think, is still rather low. Um, I just my supposition is how it... I, thought maybe it would appear in the data sets and then would manifest. Uh, usually those are quite disparate. <laughs> I describe something and it's sort of close the way that it actually manifests in terms of the language. The language is all there, but my particular take on it is rarely that accurate. Um, however, here we do have the um, uh, flyby stuff. It, it's altered the emotional intensity. We have a lot more uh, UFO language coming out of China and um, uh, the stands, Uzbekistan, etc. Um, so, and a lot of video coming out of there as well. So we may indeed be very close to some kind of a phenomenal threshold event uh, in uh, video capture of um, a UFO flyby that would meet the language of the cruise ship um, forecast. Uh, and uh, if that is indeed the case, then we're, if that stuff shows up, then we're right there, just, you know, almost there uh, for this uh, slip or shift into um, sound money. Um, I guess you'd have to say our first sound money on the planet offerings in a long time. And that's a very profound temporal marker for the emergence of uh, new economies around the planet, all different kinds of stuff. Uh, again, it's in the reports. So uh, just wanted to bring everybody up to, to uh, where we're at with the post-processing. Most of it's done at this point. Uh, I have to run some cleanup routines and so on, so it shouldn't be any more uh, immediacy data um, sets that have to be uh, processed for the October uh, cleanup. In any event, the um, uh, Hillary campaign with Hillary missing uh, not showing up for campaigning is a little odd and kind of goes to the idea that indeed this week we'll see a lot more questions about her health and what's happening with that, which are not going to end. Data sets even back, you know, six months or so uh, were saying that anything that showed up in the political realm here doesn't end just because the election ends up um, uh, past, in the past. So uh, questions about her health are going to continue either way, whether she's elected or not. So we'll see. Uh, it's going to be a rather interesting week. Uh, if Bitcoin is doing its rise, we'll know by Friday. And once we know it's uh, going to be that weekend, then we can sit back and also watch for the silver and gold rise the following uh, late Monday afternoon and into Tuesday morning. Uh, that's where we're at. The, sorry it took too long anyway. I'll see if I can chop a few minutes out of this, including those last few statements. So bye, guys. Take it easy. Enjoy your day. Over. The reason that I say this is